Motorbike recently here is a very good business for the youths because most of the youths today, this is the business they are depending on. And most of the women are benefiting from this, this taxi motorbike in the region here. And uh, uh, days ago, we were doing this taxi, months ago, we were doing this taxi, but we were so disturbed on the street. The policemen normally stop us, they say no to this taxi, because it is not in the Gambian constitution. We have no right to do it, though we accept. But most of us are doing it because of this is where we are having our survival. And most of us are from this back way. And some of them, they come from this back way. The government give them money. They buy their, they, they take their money and buy this motorbike doing business, sustaining themselves not to go to, not to go to the uh, back way. We went to the chairman area council. We tell him about the issue. They tell us that, okay, now they are going to do it as an amendment so that they can push it to the parliament. They discuss about the issue to see that whether we, they will accept it or not. Mm -hmm. You see? So that was the procedure we are working on. But you know, we are people whom you know that it's not easy for us to meet the, this guy, Magasi. Yeah. So we have to get the right people. At least some of the stakeholders whom you know they can able to support us, especially people like the chairman, CEO, area council. They were really councilor Seni Kanute, they were really in support of us because they see what we are gaining from it and they see most of the youths are working on this. Some some youths are here, they normally break and enter. Some are drug dealers. They sell drugs until their people have already lose hope on them. You see, even if the drug squad holds them to have the money to release them, their people is a problem. Now they leave all that thing, they are doing this taxi. Now there are people having hope on them. They are bringing money to their people, feeding them. They have already have hope on their children now. Where you know why? They, they have already lost hope before. But now they have hope on them. They normally stop us on the street. On the checkpoints, at the checkpoint, they stop us. You see, we ask, we assign you to stop taxi, stop it. They, most of us are there, they normally hold some taxi men here, charge them money, they take their money. End of the day, nothing come out of it. Because we, we normally walk, maybe for some months, they come and tell us that, no to taxi, why are you doing taxi? They hold, most of the taxi men park their one place. If you go for your motorbike, they charge you for money. Some are paying thousand dollars. Some are paying thousand five. Per taxi per day is two hundred and fifty dollars. You have to. That's what you are to reconcile a day. Okay. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Example: I'm a Gambian. I'm having a motorbike taxi. I buy it, give it to a, my fellow Gambian youth driving it. So he normally work per day. Per day is 250. Then anything he have more on top of that 250 belongs to him. Okay. But the 250 that's what I demand as the owner as the owner of the motorbike. They say let us not go to Barkway, and we are not going to Barkway. We are here. We we introduce our own employment, self employment. They say no to that. I think they should have find a way for us to get a, a put a tax on us where you know by we can able to pay that tax. I think it's more favorable than, than saying us to stop it generally. Because most of the youth recently they are frustrated. Some are dealing drugs mercilessly recently because they, are, they assign them to stop the taxi. And most of them are saying, I will sell drugs. And any drug squad who face me, we will die. I'm ready to die with the drug squad, sir, because we, we leave everything. We are doing this taxi to make sure we leave this drug affairs, this bandy affairs. Now they say no to that also. They don't give us job. Now what did they expect us to do?
We are right here at Basel Layout where we are meeting a young guy, just 23 years, Abubakar Jalo. He returned from Libya in 2017 as a migrant returnee. Upon his arrival, he ventured into business that is motorbiking in Basel. But then the business is actually not going well, not going smoothly as they face some problems. We are at his residence just here and then he's going to tell us what those problems are. Hello. Abu Bakar, how are you? Uh, fine, bro. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so, Abu Bakar Jalo, thank mm. you for welcoming us here in Basia. Okay. Tell us your experience in Libya. In Libya, don't get very grass, you know. I had a terrible experience in Libya. I was there with two friends, but they were both killed. One was shot and the other drowned in the sea. I am the only survivor. I got smashed on my head and I was repeatedly jailed. My family had to send a huge amount of money to free me. This is why I came back home. To make the journey, I was able to put up $130,000 plus contributions from some of my family members. My intention was to go to Europe and make fast money and then come back home. Here in Basay, there was hope in the motorbikes taxi business as I started generating enough money in the beginning, but now the police are making it impossible for us to survive. Since I started the taxi business, I have been getting good money. I can save more than $200 every day after allocating the $250 to the motorbike owner. In a month, I can get a profit of $4,000. All of a sudden, we started getting harassed by the police for doing the business. They will let us work until the end of the month draws near and they want to start coming after us. They will arrest us and seize our motorbikes. So for us to get back our machines, we will have to pay $1,000 or even $1,500 sometimes. This is our nightmare, and for me particularly, as a returnee.